We've done these steps for years. We used to do these as an amateur. If I start picking the vibes up that he's tired, I will try and ease him down, but he, he do not like it really. He'd rather train hard even when he is tired. We want the unification fight now because um, with Teddy's career, it's always kept rolling. We've never stood still. So we've always gone on to the next one, to the next one, and uh, he's had defences now. So um, we're ready. We want, we want a new challenge. We want a unification fight. If that does, doesn't come, then we might step up to 140 and try and win a belt at uh, another weight class. But that's the aim, is to keep moving forward, really. Don't stand still. 13 30. Second session of the day, we did not do a Petra fight. Fifth defence, we were only to be in this stage of camp. We've done it 32 times now. We've, we've come up 32 times, went on, sure, same again on April 8th. Yeah, Steve does everything for me, sort of sparring out, he sorts my diet out. Yeah, he's more of a friend than he is a coach, and what he's done for me, I can't thank him enough. People just said I wouldn't have won a British title and now I'm going into my fifth defence of a world title and that's all, all thanks to him. Oh, the top's off. The top's off. He's probably more nervous now than what he will be on fight night. He keeps doing this to us. Sometimes his sparring doesn't go well. And we're nervous thinking, why, why aren't he getting it right? And then it comes to fight night and he's the coolest person in the dressing room. I think sure he does it to keep us on our toes. <laughs> I think it sometimes he sees the fighting as the easy bit. I think the training and the hard work and the sparring and the making weight, I think that's the hard stuff for him. He, he used to say to me in the early days, oh, I'll never earn money off boxing me, I'll just be one of them people who might achieve something, but the money won't come with it. And then once we got to the British title and the world title, I think he's thinking, wow, I don't want to let this go. So that's why he trains so hard. I've always felt like I've been able to be myself. Um, coming out was um, a, a, um, a little bit like I thought, oh my God, like what's my, what's my mum going to say when I'm telling my mum? I was only like, <laughs> I was only uh, 15. And then, um, but she, she was like, cool. I was just like preparing for the worst. And she was just like, yeah, put the kettle on. But I've always had boyfriends. So Nikki's my first girlfriend. And it's kind of just like, everyone's like, what? And then it's like, uh, out of all the tournaments and everything that we were in, which was a ton, uh, we've never fought each other. Yeah. And we're the only one. So in like the top 10 uh, girls that we could say that are like consecutive and they're always winning, um, we fought them both multiple times, both of us, but we've never ever fought each other. Yeah, either we'd always be at the other end, opposite okay. sides of the draw or she wasn't there, yeah, or, I wasn't, or there. I wasn't there, or she wasn't there. So we go to a vegan restaurant. She gets nachos and she eats the nachos, and she's like, hey, Merlin. <laughs> yeah. Um. Does this have nuts in it? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah, like, let me think, uh, yeah, I think so, because it can't be made with dairy. And she was like, oh, I was like, why are you allergic? To <laughs> yeah, she's I was like, like <laughs> trying to act all calm. She was like, yes, everything is fine, took a sip of my drink. <laughs> and I was like, do you need to go to the hospital? Because I'm not a calm person. And she was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, so I had to rush her to the hospital. <laughs> And like her throat was already closing up, it was really bad. Then like get her a shot of adrenaline, and we had to sneak out of the hospital. <laughs> we had to lie to the coaches, and then yeah. eventually tell them the truth. <laughs> and then ever since then we became like inseparable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daniel's a very quiet, humble character. I don't think he'd be doing too much of the trash talking but I'm sure he'll be doing something with his fists in the ring. We've been going sparring, he's been knocking everyone out. He's knocked this guy out last week who's had, what, 15 pro fights or something? Daniel knocked him out and when he got up from the canvas, Daniel was skipping. It was unbelievable. <laughs> My young daughter, Caroline, she's never lost a fight. She's had um, 22 fights. She's only 16, number one in Europe. And Prince, my youngest, he's 12. He's, he's really good. 
he's only 12, he fights 18 and 19 year olds. It's unbelievable. I, I was always interested to find out where that name Dubois came from. And he gave, told me the story about the lady Sylvia Dubois in the 19th century. She was a slave boxer, bare knuckle fighter. And apparently um, she gave her, her mistress a hiding and she got her freedom. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the blood. It's time to go to work. It's always, every day is hard when I'm here. Every day, you know, every day is a, a challenge, just getting through the training session, conquering it, you know, b bossing it. This is Martin Bowers. <laughs> Let's go to the water. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is my guy. This, is, this guy pushes me every day in the gym. He sets up all these hard drills for me to do. Daniel's been in the gym for a long while. I've watched Daniel over the years, probably since he was probably about six-ish, he'd been yeah. coming to the gym. Yeah, no doubt. He's always coming with his dad, so I've watched him grow and, more, and grow and grow, for want of a better word. Jeb is great. He's really got a good jab. But I mean, what should they look out for? Don't, don't blink. Not to blink, that's what they should look out for. Ready, away we go. You know, he's not flash boy, he's not, he's not big-headed. He's not a bully in the gym. He's not in it for the fame. I think he's in it for the fame and the money. But that is allowed. Well done. Well done. Good work there at the end. Yeah, we're at Anfield, Liverpool v Arsenal. Going to be going on the pitch beforehand. A bit nervous, you know, I always get nervous. I get more nervous going on the pitch than I do walking up to an arena to fight, it's mad. Well, I love all the Smith brothers, you know, because they've all got balls of steel, uh, and they all go in there and they fight with the heart, and that's the way I try to play football, and that's the reason why I've got so much respect for them, and it's a unique situation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but has anyone else got three brothers that are top professional boxers as well? And I don't think they'll realise what they're doing and how good they are and how special it is to have it all in the same family, maybe until the ball finished and they all look back on all the, all the highs that they've had and all the amazing yeah. chances. I've said the same thing, you know, I've said, it won't be recognised until we're gone and it sounds, you know, it, big heads and that we're bragging, but it's not, you know, four brothers. I've seen somebody, Luke Campbell and Tommy Coyle, they're both trying to compete for, to be the first British champion from Hull. We've had four in one house. Yeah, but it came cop loves the kids, still like the cop, because there's still an load of people who are sit by by the cop, so, you know, it's, um, it's nice to be in there, but it's always, you get a better view from that side. If I have an off night or don't play well, someone can bail me out of trouble, and we win and lose together as a team and as a squad. It's a lonely sport for him. He's on his own. You know, you can have a bad game and get away, you can still probably win the match, you having a bad game, you can still come away with the three points. You know, we have a bad fight, you know, 99 times out of 100, we're going to lose that fight. Being a sportsman in this city, obviously it's great when the support around you and they back you and they help you get over the line. You know, from a football point of view, it's being called the 12th man. You know, and I've seen the support this fella gets when he fights local and all his brothers, and it's incredible to have that backing. But it also comes with pressure as well, because it comes with expectation that you've got to perform and, and deliver in front of them. But we are lucky to come from this city and we're proud to come from this city because no matter what sport you're in, if you're good at it, they get behind you and give you an incredible backing.